the casters a little bit. Uh, here we got Crip, and we got a new face. Hello. Got the Kibbler. Uh, are are you here. on a team? Uh, BMK Gaming, my own team. Wow. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> uh, so coming up, we're going to have the Roger versus Phone Tap match. Uh, what do you think about this, Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a really exciting match. Phone Tap definitely has a lot to prove. He's been proving it lately, and maybe he can continue proving it. And Roger, looking to try and take his first championship, he has been second a lot. Yeah. He's been really working for it. He's been playing like every single Open, trying to qualify, really thirsty for that first place. So I think he's going to perform really, really well. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite tournament players. I think Fontap played uh, very well yesterday as well. I think mm -hmm. his loss was uh, mostly an unfortunate one. And at this stage in the tournament, being on the final day, uh, there, is, there is no safety net. If, if you lose, you are gone. You are yeah. out the door. Um, so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the better player has a merciful RNG. <laughs> yeah, hopefully RNG doesn't decide it and it's all skill. Like every card game, isn't that right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I had, a, I had a chance to catch uh, some of both their matches yesterday, mm -hmm. and they both played extremely well. So mm -hmm. uh, definitely looking forward to a good match between the two of them. Do you have, uh, do you have a side you'd pick? Uh, I, I can't say I would definitely pick a side. Uh, I you know, caught a little bit of, uh, of Roger's interviews, and he you know, definitely sounded like he had the right sort of mindset going in. With more than just Hearthstone. In oh, fact. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was really impressed by uh, his uh, general perspective toward the game and just toward his approach to games in general. Yeah, yeah. Very impressive stuff. Uh, here we get to see the, uh, the deck lists again. Of course, these players are running the same decks they have uh, throughout the tournament in these last few days. Mm -hmm. um, open up Warrior versus Druid. How yeah. about that? That is, a, that is a decent spot for Druid, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's generally a spot that you want to be on the Druid side. Uh, Druid has the ability to both sort of come out quickly as well as win a long game uh, with the card advantage from Ancient of Lore. Lots of big minions that the uh, warrior has to use their, their life total as a resource to kill, and then you're you know threatened to die from combo at any time. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not terrific, because I believe it is a Grim Patron yeah, Warrior. Yeah, it's the Patron Warrior. But, um, but I feel Druid has a chance, and it's really these kind of hit-and-miss classes that you... If you get a decent spot, you're kind of mm -hmm. happy with. Yeah, I wouldn't be unhappy being the Druid here, yeah. so... Definitely. I mean, Druid is a class that can really win any game. You know, yeah, having yeah. having wild growth and having innervate, you're able to present really threatening board states very quickly. Yeah, and even if the Druid doesn't win here, Roger still has the hand. Oh, and that's right. Yeah, this, this <laughs> there's at least one ooze in here. Did, yeah, did we ever here. reveal a double ooze? I don't think we saw a double ooze, but I believe we saw both ooze and Harrison. Yes. yes. So yeah. he definitely has quite a bit of weapon hate, and that's a big deal against Patron Warrior. They're very reliant on Death Spite. Uh, in particular, to actually activate their uh, their patrons and their frothing group. Yeah, yeah. Especially... No death plays half as many grim patrons. Yeah. The way you got to look at it. <laughs> yeah, especially against uh, Druid, where if you don't get those early patrons and they don't have to try playing catch up the whole time, they can start hitting you in the face a lot quicker, and combo becomes a real threat. Yeah. This is really interesting. Did Bone Tap actually just not mulligan any of the cards in his opening hand? He kept all three. Yeah. Oh, three good cards. It's they're just they're great. That suck. It, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, those are those are definitely all very good cards. But I mean, typically, you know, you usually expect a druid to, to try and look for mm -hmm. wild growth to look for innervate mm -hmm. um, because those are, those are so central to their strategy. But here, you know, he knows how good acidic swamp ooze is, and he's willing to lean on that. And you know, obviously, shade is a card that can actually hide from those weapons yeah. before they can actually kill it. So. And I don't know if you caught it yesterday, but phone type I believe had the most brutal mulligans I've seen in the tournament. I think, think I remember I uh, his hunter drawing into double freeze trap the first Ooh, game, nice. and like five drops in the second game. Uh, that, is, that is not good. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to give Roger some information, though, because he's going to see Phone Tap not play Wild Growth, not play Innervate, and he's going to be thinking, what are those cards possibly? And Acidic Swamp Ooze has to be in the back of his mind. Yeah, well, I, I, usually when you see that, it's either uh, it's either just some crazy opener, like you said, or I think sometimes people like to keep Innervate uh, Emperor. Mm -hmm. So now now the information is clear. Yeah, yeah. On, on turn four, when your play is just swipe your, your, your Gnomish Inventor, not really a particularly strong yeah. play, you know that something's up. Yeah. And yeah, here, Phone Trap's draws haven't been great. I mean, he's hit, seen swipe, swipe, seven drops, seven drops. So yeah. he doesn't really have the ability to put much pressure on right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, he had the option to attack, but I feel that because he used the swipe, the attack what? option is gone now. I, I think if he wanted to attack, you would probably just attacked into that and required uh, some kind of removal anyway. I mean, yeah. particularly with the Swamp Ooze in your hand, uh, attacking with your Shade when it's in range of a weapon 
just doesn't feel very good. You just leave your opponent with the ability to just play a weapon and hit it yeah. and get value out of their weapon, you know. Whereas here, I mean, he, he, he has to use the death fight and just go to his face. He'd way rather have the mm -hmm. ooze in play, and, or the, the shade in play, and get to ooze this now rather than have his shade be dead. And this is a huge deal because yeah. I believe next turn that Grim Patron is coming down. Oh, this oh, is oh, yeah. big, yeah. big it, swing. It might still Six. come down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doesn't... If you look at look at Roger's hand, he doesn't really have... A ton to do. I mean, he can patron inner rage, inner rage, which is it does give him a huge board. Uh, but like, yeah, he would that would be so much more powerful if there's still a death bite in play. Yeah, yeah. So it might be a loot hoarder battle rage sort of turn since you already have the second battle rage. But nothing looks really that appealing anymore. I do like that. I do like the loot hoarder battle rage. Um, every mana crystal is very important towards uh, just performing a bigger combo. Mm -hmm. And I feel the combo with just two inner rage is not good enough. Yeah, it's. Especially with the two minions on board. Each of those kill a patron by themselves. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't really end up with anything meaningful in, on board if that's, if that's what he ends up doing. So, yeah, it looks like he's got, he agrees and is going for a, uh, a longer-term plan. Would you consider inner raging down the ooze just to slow down the game? Or is that just too big of a combo piece? I, I think that when you're in this position, you're really looking to try and have a very explosive play at some point. And I don't think you can really afford to use your combo pieces to just deal with opposing minions. He does have, you know, that loot hoarder, which it's going to die, if it does die to his opponent's hero power, you know, can't contest the ooze, but I mean, he could he could maybe play Armor Smith. You know, that's that's something that can, you know, threaten the ooze and would have to take some sort of removal. I think that you need to uh, hold on to Inner Rage to do something bigger. Yeah, I, I think agree. if he plays loot hoarder, it's going to get silenced and hero powered. <laughs> <laughs> it could, it could. I mean, that, the, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how valuable the Keeper is for him here, other than you know, taking out a, uh, you know, one of the, the patrons that's been damaged yeah. or silencing a frothing berserker that didn't happen to kill him right. the turn it came to play. Yeah. Well, it's either that or, like, some The Lothab, Lothab push, one? I like a lot. Yeah, Lothab is, I like Lothab here. You, you Lothab right into Dr. Boom, that's just so much pressure, it makes it so hard for them to react. Mm-hmm. And so, because uh, Roger does not have that Death Spite play, he doesn't have the ability to actually create a big Grim Patron board without playing spells. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those Inner Rages normally cost zero. They cost a lot more the turn after you play a Lotheb. Yeah, if, if he does do Lotheb, um, do you think he has to trade with Loot Hoarder or just no. face face? I, I think you just want to, you, you, you want to push for damage here. Okay. You need to end the game before the Grim Patron Warrior is able to assemble basically everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if, if Roger just played, for instance... That's a uh, six-man execute, here. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> not not yeah. very efficient. Efficient enough. Yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's his so. best play. Like, uh, you know, like we were saying, he needs to be able to try and set up something big. He's under a lot of pressure, and just a, a turn where he passes with a couple of guys against a couple of creatures on his opponent's board, it's just not going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Though here he does have a reasonably easy cleanup, doesn't he? Oh, no, he, do, he's, he doesn't he's the have the execute. Yeah, he doesn't have the execute right. anymore. Yeah, Roger's under a lot of in a lot of trouble here. Is it is it time to uh, to Yolo patron? Yeah, you just like patron and then inner rage a bunch and then whirlwind and hope. Hope for the best. I, yeah. I, I think that's really your only play here. I mean, you you are already you know whether it's 14 damage in play, you're at 12. Two of those are boom bots. Like I don't even I don't even know if you survive even if you do that. You yeah. Know? yeah. I, I actually think that I mean. With the swipe in Roger's hand, uh, it's possible that that, that phone, or uh, rather uh, in Photab's hand, it's possible Roger's just dead. Yeah. Oh, it seems he, very I likely. I think it's quite certain he that may he's just dead. have yeah. to play. Well, he, he can potentially play the the. Um, he could play, say, the uh, Death Spite into the uh, the pirate as a taunt, and then Whirlwind or something, or rather Whirlwind then do that, which leaves him in a position where he's not just dead to basically everything. Okay. Yeah, but how do you win the game with this I, I'm, I'm not saying you win. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just saying whether or not you're dead right now. Yeah, you're just surviving <laughs> another turn. I don't and know. it just still doesn't guarantee the win. Being able to win the game here is pretty ambitious. Oh, that's and, the, bad. and the pirate goes and down. That's, okay, yeah, you're dead. dead. That's going to be the game right there. So. <laughs> Boombots yeah. do as Boombots do and <laughs> take out everything they need to and close up the game here. Imagine if he didn't have that Acidic Swamp boost, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There would have been so, so many patrons. Yeah, the game to the point totally where they different. couldn't be handled. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Patron Warrior would have just ran away with it. Yeah, absolutely. So on one end here, uh, the Warrior didn't win. Not a big deal that it didn't win. It is going to win sometime. But the Druid sneaking in that victory is very nice. Uh, yeah. With, I mean, Druid can win against anything, but it really hasn't proved to be consistent. Yeah, it's not the most consistent deck. But yeah. as, as we were just saying, Phone Tap definitely took that win on the back of, of Swamp. Yeah. His, yeah. his decision absolutely. to fight against the uh, the warrior specifically with that that tech card uh paid off here big mm -hmm. time
Yeah, and, and a Harrison wouldn't have really done the the same job. It would have been, it yeah, it would have been too enough. late. Yeah, that's the, the Ooze versus Harrison. Ooze can come down and take out the Death Spite before the Patron turn, mm -hmm. whereas Harrison has to wait until five. So it, it, you know, there's a big difference between those two as Absolutely. far as interacting that combo. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of things went phone taps way there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so what do you what do you think about the uh, the, the other matchup possibilities we have left here? Um, well, going off memory, I think Roger has a, a warlock. Handlock, and yeah. And what's the other one? Druid. Is it? Druid. It I might be. I well, we'll figure it out in a second. Phone Tap, I believe, has Shaman and Hunter, mm -hmm. which is interesting because he's actually, as far as I can tell, the only person who has neither Warrior or Warlock in their lineup that, 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 that I've actually seen in the matches. I haven't gone through that's and looked at true. all the lists, but I, has been those, extremely are, those are the two, the two yeah, decks Warlock's that have been the most really popular, popular by a lot. Yeah, that's and true. And Phone Tap actually has neither of them, which yeah. is really interesting to me. That was interesting he has Shaman. Uh, other players have not done so well with Shaman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but Phone Tap did okay. He, I mean, he was the one to win with Shaman. <laughs> he did. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't I think any other player was able to do that. He had the, It was against the, the handlock there. He put his opponent to two on like turn five or something. Yeah. And then was just sweating, trying a burn spell <laughs> for several turns. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. But it looks like he is choosing to go with his hunter here against the Grim Patron Warrior. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, he didn't know that it was going to be Warrior, but there's a, a good expectation that's going to be the case. Yeah, we, we talked about this uh, on, on the previous day that uh, these two decks are pretty even, as mm -hmm. it seems. But uh, I actually did a bit of uh, research uh, last night, and, and it seems that most people prefer the Hunter in this situation. Why is that? Do you know? Because uh, you can usually get in enough damage, I guess, to kill them before they can get off their combos. Just the amount of pressure is very mm -hmm. good against Patient Warrior, making them break up their combo pieces to clear. I mean, if you compare... Uh, I know that Face Hunter, for instance, was really bad against Grim Patient yes. Warrior because you just get demolished by, like, Whirlwind. But when you're playing mid-range, a lot of the removal effects that the, the Grim Patron Warrior has access to aren't as good you know, against things like Animal Companion. And here we see Houndmaster, a you know, double Animal Companion Houndmaster. That's a lot of things that are going to take a lot of life if you're using weapons to kill them. It's a lot of RNG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has two copies of Summon Huffer in his hand, and we'll see if they work. Uh, would you prefer a Huffer over a Misha? I mean, you're probably actually right. In this matchup, you want a Misha. In this yeah. matchup, Misha, I definitely think is better. Well, it depends if they have a Death Bite or not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, here, Huffer is a disaster. Yeah. No, have a Huffer. <laughs> You'd be very sad to Huffer here. I actually think, yeah, I was going to say, I think it's actually correct for him not to coin yeah. it and mm -hmm. just play that because of the, the possibility of Huffer yeah. against that uh, that loot hoarder. You really yeah. don't want to run that risk. Hey, that. Wow, looking oh, good here with these draws. Down, master. I mean, we have to. Uh, uh, Roger. Oh. Roger had an okay hand, but he went turn two Loot Hoarder draw into turn three Acolyte draw. Yeah. Just from the deck to play. <laughs> Direct. <laughs> Pretty good. You just don't even bother putting it in your hand, just pick it off the top. Yeah. So, you know, theoretically speaking, you can't mm -hmm. actually do that. It's a, a digital card. <laughs> so here we have the uh, the Hound Monster. And this is this is a big deal. You know, the, yeah, it the, denies the draws. Yeah, the, the Acolyte normally is extremely powerful against uh, Haunted Creeper, but Hound Master, and this is again sort of a, uh, you know, not necessarily a, a traditional choice on Phone Tap's part. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of decks will have something like Pilot and Shredder in that place. And Houndmaster here giving him a lot of resilience against the uh, It's not the just resilience. Uh, when, whenever a deck has like such an insane amount of card draw, when you like stop it at the start, it doesn't get to the point where it's out of control. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's the thing about, about Patron Warrior is, you know, it's not just, it's not just a, uh, a combo deck. It's, uh, you know, it has all this removal and things like that. They can try and yeah. stall to that point. And, one of the great things about, you know, for instance, the warrior hero power in the deck is the warrior hero power of armor up just buys you time to get to that point. Yeah. And here um, we see some of the combo pieces just just vanish. Mm -hmm. Yep. I yeah, mean, you're going to have pressure. Emperor on six, which is basically the dream after playing a bunch of card draw, but then you have nothing. Right. Yeah. That Emperor, does, is, Emperor is not that impressive against, uh, you know, against your opponent when you just really have that much play. And that battle rage, he hasn't been able to keep any minions in play. Um, you know, I think I think that one of the best that ways other battle rage. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Yeah. But the Emperor might be able to proc twice hiding behind this Belcher, which would be pretty huge still. Is, yeah. Zero mana Battle Rage is not bad. Is there any way this can actually be handled with the current hand? Not really. Uh, I no. mean, it looks like it looks like Phone Tap, you know, he can take out the front half of the Belcher and I mean, maybe just play high main here. He doesn't really... Yeah, I think that's it. You yeah. know, like, nothing's exciting here. None of his options actually take out Emperor. He can't get really any damage through. Um, Savannah High Main, it, you know, is going to present a really big threat on the board, but he is he is running the risk of Emperor activating twice, and uh, his opponent, if he's able to find it, sort of blowing mm. well, up. He is running some options through his head. What what is the best non High Main play here? Is it going to be? Uh, can't be Freeze Trap. It has to be like uh, Mad Scientist into Animal Companion, yeah, something I like that. I can't imagine wanting to play Freeze Trap here. I mean, he he could theoretically want to attack 
like quick shot the ooze and then play freezing trap so emperor is is stranded but that seems kind of pretty weird. weak to yeah, me yeah that yeah. sounds awful <laughs> i'm not saying it's a good play i'm just i'm just saying these are things your mana can do yeah <laughs> you know i i definitely I, it seems to me like you, you know you're you're getting the best use of your turn by just slamming that high yep. yeah and that's what he chooses to do And then now, no longer under Lothab. Ooh, yeah, it doesn't really do anything just yet. Yeah. And there's right now, there's actually nothing that that uh, Roger can attack into to activate his battle rages. He's gonna have to, yeah, he's gonna have to use. Yeah, and then he can trade the slime into Lothab. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> a little late. <laughs> Not quite on time. Yeah, too many of them. All right. Well, this is good when the high main dies, though. He's gonna be able to charge off those two twos and generate more patrons. And now he has patron plus. Uh, Plus War Song. I think you taunt to try to get another tick. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I think this, this I think one is a bit more reason. optimistic, though. It is. Yeah. It is. Pretty well, you could have executed, and then it would have been a little more likely. Mm -hmm. But just getting another proc, pretty good. But now he has the the Emperor trigger on multiple combo pieces, which is really what you're looking for. You're mm -hmm. looking to get the Emperor yeah. trigger on as many as many parts of your War Song. Yeah, it's it pretty irrelevant up to this point. Yeah, yeah, but this turn, this turn's proc was, was huge, and now I think yeah we're gonna see we're gonna see Phone Tap likely take out that uh, that pirate and get the Emperor off the board. Well, actually, I could see going face oh, green risk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, no, no, you're, 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 yeah, absolutely. Like now, now we're sort of at the point where where the life total is such. That uh, the you know yeah, losing think, your high man yeah no that's totally yeah right. if you trade like you make yourself but much more vulnerable that like, that play was made pretty quickly what if that was a Leoc if it's a Leoc because some patron warriors run BGH it'd be kind of scary <laughs> and then Leoc just dies <laughs> yeah oh and this but this is actually getting, this is actually pretty scary too you know we we, we have the, the the sort of combo going through executing this. Oh, no, no, you have to you execute have to, the other one. Yeah. You have to oh yeah, yeah. The well, you, if you, yeah, yeah, you execute the high man, and then you can actually attack your. Oh well, no, he actually. You used to trade the emperor. There's yeah, he's got to trade the emperor away. Yeah. Does he? I think. You can clear the whole board here. Yeah. No, he doesn't well, have to trade the emperor away. You can freezing trap the emperor. Uh, oh yes, yes, you, you, you freezing trap, trap the emperor. That, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, th I think at this point you'd rather freezing trap the, the grim patron as he's using. Yeah, because you're cards. Yeah, your your emperor doesn't really do that much anymore. Sure. But you already have a patron in hand. Who's going? Yeah, that's, that's true. You do the second patron. And now we're, we're clearing all of this, and this is the, you know, kind of going nuts with the... Uh, guys are getting in there. Yeah. <laughs> that Whirlwind was huge. It sort of enabled that entire turn. I mean, the, well, Emperor enabled the entire turn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, getting, getting the, he, got the, he got the cost reduction on the Execute. He got the cost reduction on both pieces of combo, mm -hmm. and then he was able to actually do all of this in Whirlwind at once. Yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, that's yeah. Play everything and hope plan. I mean, <laughs> no, this that's... is a, a bunch of t a bunch of one and two power minions are not really what you want to have in play against yeah. a, a war thug. What, what beast can you get to turn turn King, this game around? King Crush? Is it? It's not enough. King I don't think. I don't. I mean, you're gonna lose your entire board here, right? What about two King Crushes? <laughs> <laughs> Still not enough. Wow. It has to be like some some Tundra Rhino shenanigans, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, is he just dead? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's just dead. Wow, we don't even get to see the beast. Oh, that's right. Just a bunch uh, of chargers. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even get to see what would come out. What's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah, that's pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> that's, that's like the first time I've seen Grip Ancient win by just dinky minions going face. I, I mean, there's a lot of them. <laughs> They're not that dinky. They do have three power. Yeah. <laughs> well, most of those are two, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Grim Patron being Grim Patron, I mean, it seemed pretty hopeless, but uh, all of a sudden it, it, it happened. I mean, that was the, yeah. the, the Emperor into Explosive Combo turn, and it was just, you know, not uh, not enough uh, in, in the tank for Phone Tap to turn that around. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think the, the trade into the Emperor would have made much of a difference? Um, I mean, it would have potentially slowed down the, you know, the incoming damage a bit, but at the same time... I don't know. I mean, it, 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 trying to recreate the, the the board state in my head here. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated. Right, because <laughs> I mean, there, it's there's... complicated when it actually happens. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, have to and go then off you, it's like, okay, I'm trying to, you know. Well, yeah. he would have been able to charge in the three threes still, and then just proc off of the the two twos. He just wouldn't get the second proc off Emperor. Emperor would be gone. There'd still be just a giant board of patrons that couldn't be dealt well, with. Well, without the proc, was that even possible? Because the re the reason it was possible is because they cost less. Well, and he, actually, he actually just doesn't need to use the. He doesn't even use, need to use the execute because it wasn't yeah. another. It wasn't it's another not trigger. Another proc. Of, right, it's it just a five five, five on board that okay, turn. Okay. So, yeah. Hmm. So yeah. I, I don't think it, I don't think it changes things at all. I think it, I think yeah, it actually it just means change. he gets to use the execute and the other thing. 
Yeah. And it actually, if anything, he probably takes more damage. Yeah, so I think I think it was correct to go mm. face, for yeah. sure. No, I agree. All right. Well, uh, the series is tied up one and one. Um, now, uh, I, I kind of like uh, Phone Tap's position just on the basis that Roger no longer has Grim Patron Warrior and <laughs> Phone Tap no longer has Druid. And uh, I think most people playing Hearthstone would agree that one of those decks is generally better. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think Phone Tap is at a advantageous position in the series currently. Mm -hmm. So I mean, right now we're, we have uh, the Shaman of Phone Tap going up against the Warlock of Roger. Yeah. Uh, and this is this is Handlock for Roger, correct? Yeah. And Mech Shaman for Phone Tap. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I, it could be quick. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely a situation where you have one deck that is looking to use its life totals of resource, and one that is trying to uh, make that life total go down as fast as possible. Yeah. This is definitely the matchup you're looking for with Mech Shaman. Oh, absolutely. Out of the lineup. Is it? I mean, the other one was Druid. Doesn't yeah, Druid not get totally either. wrecked yeah. anyway? They're both really good for Mech Shaman. Yeah. <laughs> and when you think about it, yeah. I mean, Which one's actually worse? I feel like Druid's worse. Well, Druid has, like, Innervate and can do some crazy things. And yeah, but if you don't do crazy things, you just get rolled. Yeah, the Handlock just sort of gets rolled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're even... I, I guess it depends on the exact contents of the uh, the Mech Shaman deck, too. Like, if he's playing Hex, how many... Yeah, and how many Earth Earthshot, shots. how many... Yeah. Those make a, a big difference against both decks. I really. know one of the mech shamans actually ran the double earth shock, but yeah, I yeah. don't know if it was this one. No, I don't think it was. Yeah, yeah, it was Cabby's. Yeah. Power Mace Whirling Zapomatic, pretty good start. Why is there no X over the BGH? <laughs> He's just I... thinking like minion to play? Maybe. Really? It's that important? I don't know. I think I would mulligan more aggressively for Dark Bomb. Personally. Yeah, the, the big game hunter keep here is a little unusual to me. Well, well he, he gets, got the he gets dark, a dark bomb. bomb anyway. There you go. Maybe he thinks that there's going to be a mech that's getting really oh, wait, big wait, from power. The, uh, the eight eight. Oh yeah, 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 there's fell reaver. Fell reaver. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yours. You definitely okay. Yeah, the double fell, double fell reaver. Then yeah, you want to kill that? Big yeah. game hunter keep makes okay. more sense. <laughs> it hits you. For he eight. knows. He knows more than we do here. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> it's just such an unusual matchup because you don't see it very often. Is uh, is the double fell reaver basically auto include? No. I think one is is more common even though. Yeah, people started playing around with the uh, the new shaman card. Can't remember the name of it. Fireguard destroyer. Oh, yeah, Fireguard, Fireguard destroyer yes. in the slot of the uh, the fell reaver. I'm a little curious about the the power mace keep on phone taps part. Uh, what do you think about that? It seems like it's, I think really it's, good. it's it's just like a win more type of hand. Like I got the wind fury. I got the guy that buffs the wind fury yeah. and takes yeah. care of the garbage displayed. And in a very optimistic sense, uh, you worst, win the game immediately. Worst case scenario, you do get, you know, you just get hit on it like it's happening here. You know, even yeah. if you don't buff something right away, you're getting a, uh, most likely to have something on turn, the next turn after you just crunch them in the face. Mm -hmm. I like That's what you're looking Yeti. to do is crunch them in the face. <laughs> yeah, you get the Boulder Fist to Ogre. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, the Shredder is just more vulnerable to silence. Mm -hmm. And that might be one of the answers coming down. Yeah, definitely. So I would like to see the Yeti come down and get buffed. I mean, if you're if you're in phone tap spot, I mean, I, th I think that's what you're you're, you're just trying to you know uh, oh, trying to play around. Not. Is, oh, no. Yeah, he's playing around silence this way because yeah, now he can way. buff it next turn. Uh, that one though, that's a bigger creature. It is a bit bigger, and then the the cogmaster not quite on time. Ooh. Okay, so he's not gonna swing again? Yeah, I thought he'd Sting. swing. But yeah, oh, I don't. He's gonna take a one and three for the damage. Just test his RNG a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I mean. Yeah, he's no, he's, he's he's not, he doesn't, doesn't want to go for the damage here. But Interesting. I don't know if that was intentional, because he thought about attacking after. Yeah. It feels like one of those plays that you make before you fully think through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked like Phone Tap kind of went through that pretty quickly. He's like, okay, I can play Mech Warper and this, and then, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so I guess we see Belcher probably come down. Well, no, I mean, what, what might happen is um, if there was no taunt coming from the Warlock side, uh, he may have traded the 4-3 into the Giant and then buffed the 2-3. Oh. I guess. Yeah, I, can, I can see that. No, but then, I mean, then, you, do, really. then you do the 2-3 and the Yeti. No, I, I, I just like buffing the Yeti immediately. Yeah, I just hit him in the face. But it's going to work out nicely here to be able to get through the Belcher. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. The other way, you know, you end up basically giving your opponent the, the ability to just trade into your biggest minion guaranteed. And now, you know, he's able to attack into the... Uh, yeah, attack into this. Actually, no, I think, yeah, I think you taunt better. spare part the Giant. And try and kill. Why do you want to trade oh. your mech shaman? Yeah, you're, you're, I don't think I don't think your goal here is. Okay. Like, if, if, if if I'm in photap spot, my goal here is to just try and just make that giant not killing my stuff rather than trying to trade into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just okay. Kill the face. Yeah. What about uh, just playing a Neutron first though? So maybe it buffs that. I think you'd rather get the damage in on your attacker this turn right away. Yeah. Shadow flame. Ooh. Shadow flame is pretty good. That is a powerful card.
And yeah. he actually doesn't even need but to Shadow Flame the Giant. Even when he if does... If he wanted to, he could play Sun Fury into Shadow yeah, Flame. Oh, wow, it. that's way better. <laughs> yeah. If he, if he had to Shadow Flame the Giant, I was going to say Dr. Boom comes down next turn, so it's not that bad for Phone Tap, but this is horrible for Phone Tap. Yeah, he actually gets to keep the Giant in play as well. Do you yeah. Shadow Flame first? Maybe you get, like, a Frost Wolf Grunt you'd rather slay? Yes, that's a possibility. Okay, he's using a coin. I, oh, like, I, I like So that. he really wants to kill everything. Yeah, and this, this and means... And he can't. <laughs> and he can't. So here... He tried so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but by not having to attack... By not attacking... Uh, using the Mortal Coil the and not damage. attacking... Yeah. Not only does he get the face damage, but he also keeps the one health on the Giant, which means that there's no... There's very, very few four-power minions that can actually come out of his Shredder. There's a number yeah. of three-power. Mm -hmm. So now it's very... It was very unlikely that there was anything that could actually contest his Giant coming yeah, down. Yeah, that was very well done. So it seems like it's a game where the yeah it's a typical mech shaman versus handlock where the handlock rushes down the mech shaman <laughs> 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 happens every time <laughs> every time. I mean the, you know the Gul'dan is they're both orcs they're both SM orcs you know Gul'dan and Thrall but always in, always in this happens. case like BGH <laughs> BGH Doctor Boom never survives the first bomb yeah so it looks like we're gonna see Rag come down and then ooh not bad. All that right, could have been worse. He's got the Siphon Soul to respond to this, though, so this rag really needs to go face because he really values that 8 face damage. Yeah, it does. And there's 8. And it goes face. I mean, at the same time, though, Phone Tap's hand is not good for finishing his opponent off. He has yeah. a Cogmaster and a Mech Warper. Those are great early plays. Those are not great plays on turn 9. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're getting to the point face in the game. Face damage. Yep, and, and here comes... Oh, oh no. I like the face. Uh, yeah, I, I think... mean. He's he has what with a dark bomb? Yeah, with the dark bomb in his hand, I definitely think that going face seems great here. He's he's threatening to kill his opponent in two attacks. Yeah, he's, there yeah, he's got lethal next turn. Because I mean, there's there's his opponent has two damage. He's he's changing it to you know one damage. That doesn't really do all that much. But here we actually see a rusty horn, which yeah. can perhaps protect him. He's gonna need to use it. He's, yeah, if, if he doesn't rusty horn, he is dead. And there it is. That's a good target. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. Wah, wah, wah. Well, you, I think you have a lot of tap options for lethal here. Well, at the same time, you either need lethal you're, or you're, taunt. Kind, you're kind of scared of of tapping here. You know, you're at thirteen. You're only able to guarantee take three off the board. Your opponent has five, six. Yeah, your opponent has no hand. Like, yeah. Yeah, you can just trade. Okay, with the dark bomb. Yeah. yeah. Here. Like, what do you lose to here? Well, that's that's what I'm saying. If you, I think if you use the dark bomb rather than tap here, you're taking enough damage. Oh, ooh, is this? It's no. only ten. Oh, he does not do 10 damage. We need another one of those. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That could happen. It's possible. <laughs> no. no. Not even close. Bargain based in prices on that crackle. And now it's over. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's 13 damage. Well, it's, it's actually over he, with yeah. the he Whirling might Blade. As, he might as well have 30. Yeah. The, yeah. the Whirling Blade actually ends the game right here. Oh, yes, of course. And there we have it. All right, Roger coming back from our first loss. Put a, puts up two wins on the board consecutively. And that was a matchup that we thought was going to be tough for him. We thought yeah. that getting his hand locked through the Shaman was going to be difficult. And now uh, Roger has Druid remaining to take down the uh, Hunter and Shaman of, uh, of Phone Tap. I still yeah, prefer to be Phone Tap in really? this situation. Yeah. I, I think it's close to even, but I think just winning two games is just harder. Yeah, I mean, yeah, e either easy. of those matches, I'm, I'm happier to be uh, on phone tap side, mm -hmm. but having to go through both of them, I, I, mm -hmm. I think I'd rather be in Roger's seat right now. Yeah, you know? just because Druid can get the crazy starts and handle it. Also, yeah, or it can not, and yeah, lose I'd, twice. I think there's a strong possibility either way. It's still pretty up in the air. You don't have this much faith in Druid, do you? <laughs> I don't like Druid. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you have against nature, man? There's nothing against nature. It's just... <laughs> I never draw a wild growth or innervate, and I lose to Hunter every time. So. <laughs> what else do you lose to? Everything else. Yeah. <laughs> it worked, for, worked for pretty well for you at BlizzCon. You, know, yeah, you, BlizzCon, you drew a bunch yeah, of wild yeah, growths yeah. there, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you can't be too sad. Yeah. I drew it when it counted. Maybe I should, maybe I should try Drew it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe you should just save it for this one. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Save your, yeah. You just keep the wild growth in your back pocket. I just until, keep telling uh, everybody, Drew it's bad, Drew it's bad, Drew it's <laughs> bad. Then at BlizzCon, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You somehow well, it, it, is, uh, it is, of course, a Druid. Uh, <laughs> phone Tap does go with the Hunter, I believe that was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter. Uh, he's got to win with both. Both are pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, like we were saying before, I, I think I'd rather be on Phone Tap's side for either individual one of these matchups. Uh, I think in particular with the, the double Houndmaster Druid. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the Druid yeah. isn't really great at dealing with big minions early. Mm -hmm. Or freeze traps. Uh, no, or, or freeze traps as well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the ability to, uh, you know, just put down a, a hunted creeper and have that be a real threat. 
you know, your opponent can't just kill it right away. You know, there's there's not that many ways that, that mm -hmm. Druid, they don't have, you know, cheap minions to just contest it immediately. Their way to deal with it are things like Wrath. Yeah, I don't know if, does Roger have Zombie Chow in his deck? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any Zombie Chows from Roger. And it looks like he mulligans the entire hand. All right. Siri's definitely digging. Excellent hand from the Hunter. Yeah, and here we see... Less than excellent from the uh, Druid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is not, not an exciting hand uh, for Roger. <laughs> oh, it oh. got much <laughs> less exciting, too. So what, what do you have against nature again? <laughs> this, this. And, this is uh, interesting. Do you, do you go? I think I think the juggler pushes for a lot more damage. It's definitely a lot more threatening. You do a lot more damage, and I mean the only the only card that uh, Roger can really have to contest it immediately would be uh, a wrath. I mean he could have innervate into keeper. Yeah. Um, well, but... innervate just opens up a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Innervate into keeper though on a juggler is usually game over at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's not gonna you know innervate to keeper on your your uh, your hunted creeper. Not nearly as as, yeah, as big of a it swing, but in the game, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's looking pretty good for the hunter. Oh yeah. I uh, I would you know previously saying I would I would love to be in phone tap seat. Now you know if you could just get up and I just sit down wow. right here, I'd be I'd be thrilled. <laughs> oh, we we just got a Misha too. Ooh, and, yeah. yeah, Misha's the best option from here, I think. You yeah. know the, the like we were saying the you know, the, the big best option with the with the current board. Uh, oh, exactly. Yeah. Safeguard. And then oh, that seems like the best play to me. I yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I, I guess his thought is that he needs to be able to contest the Misha as well, and that maybe that gives him his best bet. Yeah. But here, I mean, he he also he also does know that uh, if he's been watching the matches, that Phone Tap plays two copies of Huntmaster. Yeah. Or Houndmaster rather, and it's really scary for him to get Houndmaster here. Yeah. Misha just got an upgrade. Yeah. And we are seeing a lot of damage. Just dead. Yeah, he's <laughs> just dead. Yeah, he is at basically zero health. I, the number says twelve, but it's it's actually wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is even faster than like Mech Shaman games. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Hunter's doing as Hunter does. Is... Yeah, the the coin juggler is such a risky play, but it's it's a high risk, high reward oh, play. Yeah. And this this is the reward version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that juggler alone has done what like eleven damage to face or something. It's attacked three times, hit hit twice, triggers. Yeah. So much damage. And I mean, he could. Cobalt like Geomancer he's... off the shredder, and he might be back in this. Ooh, no. no healing, unfortunately. <laughs> it's actually happening. <laughs> 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 really? Yeah, that's pretty funny. So here, he's trying to get back on this board, but that that knife juggler is still here, and that uh, there's another Houndmaster could come down. Yeah, I mean that's, I think just yeah, Houndmaster that guy up just a face, 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 yeah, all of the face. As the Morgan proves, yeah. yep. knife yep. juggler agrees. He's gonna be again. Yep. yep. <laughs> wow. That is a sharp shooting juggler. He is. Yeah. Put an apple on That's my head at 16. anytime. Let's, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it's. <laughs> More than Roger is at health. four. He's at four. It's turn six. Now he can use those force and natures he drew at the beginning. Yeah, yeah now <laughs> you're right. You're well in your way. <laughs> the best thing is he's gonna like kill the, the haunted creeper, and he's gonna take two more to face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Oh, he can't swipe himself in the face. I love how he did that like completely emotionlessly too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, swipe is such a terrible BM card. We have we have some Blizz devs in, in the studio here. Maybe they can get that fixed. You should be able to swipe your own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's weird. Juggler we finally go. missed. Finally missed. Yeah. yeah. He's he failed. Oh, to, he failed, oh, he to failed. Lethal himself. He failed to lethal himself. <laughs> Now there's there's some options Hunter has here. I think ooh the the, the tall strider. I think that's gonna be the game deciding card. Hopper, Hopper. Oh, oh. What a letdown. <laughs> you can see Photap is totally disappointed. <laughs> yeah, that game went horrible. That Maybe was, didn't get a finish with Hopper. Yeah. So we are we are back to a quick a quick two and two in this series. Phone tap uh, coming back. Phone tap doesn't doesn't get any breaks. Like it's it's five games long every single opponent. He yeah. has he has been uh, you know no easy matches, no yeah. easy matches so far. And I mean this is certainly a tough one. Roger is definitely a formidable opponent. Absolutely. And uh, we are coming down to what is it? shaman versus the druid. The shaman versus the druid. Uh, both strong decks, but somewhat inconsistent. Yeah, both really inconsistent, especially Mech Shaman. That deck is all over the place. <laughs> you really think Mech Shaman's more inconsistent than Druid? Yeah, probably I, the only deck. I think the only deck really. That's more I, I mean, I think I think that Druid has more polarized power, polarized draws, but Mech Shaman. I mean, it, it just has a bunch of cheap minions that it plays and attacks your face with. 
Yeah, or sometimes you just get lava bursts and crackles and Dr. Boom sure, and fire sure. elementals. And, and, and sometimes Drew and just gets a, a fistful of force nothing. of nature. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's really all over the place with Mech Shaman. And You've played a lot of it too, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I played in many tournaments. And Mech Shaman, you really need that early game damage. Druid, oh, you don't really need it as much in some matchups. Well, Druid, Druid is definitely less reliant on having the specifically mm -hmm. explosive start. Yeah. That's that's definitely true. Mech Shaman really needs to get in the early minion yeah. damage for cards like Lava Burst, like Crackle, to be able to actually decide those games. Yeah, like half of their, all of their burn spells are useless if you're not already ahead. Yeah, you really don't want to be crackling minions or Lava yeah. Bursting minions, like especially in the middle turns of the game. Yeah. Those are games Yolo you know you're... Crackle on Dr. <laughs> Boom, anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> it's not the greatest. Yeah, there, there are definitely uh, quite a few YOLO plays in Shaman decks. Yeah. yeah. Whether whether they're Crackle or whether they're they're going for Stone Claw Totem. But uh, for Mech Shaman, it's usually, what can I do your face? Let me looks see. Like a, looks like a quick prayer there. <laughs> for Doomhammer. Ooh, and speaking of, speaking of hands that are not... You keep Fel Reaver, don't you? No, no, I don't, no, no, no never. I don't think never. So. You need to get the explosive start. You have to get some chip yeah, damage. You have in. to draw into and it. And that is a, you know, we have, we have a Cogmaster, but That's a little terrible, top man. end. It's, it's good enough. For Ooh, that's, no, that's, that's not good. Yeah, the Druid does have the good hand. The Druid yeah, has a great hand. That is a very powerful hand. He even has the Harrison Jones that can threaten to now uh, he has take cards. out Doomhammer. Yeah. yeah we, we, we've seen Doomhammer be a very uh, integral part of... Ooh, Ooh top that deck. was a good draw. That was a good draw. That was the yeah. best. And draw. if you look at if you look at Roger's hand, there's there's no keeper, there's no wrath. He has no he way to get we to get it. we off the board. He has to innervate into it. Yeah. He's gonna take six damage from it. That's gonna be huge. Yep. This is a lot of damage. And uh, I mean, if if we see, actually see a uh, Anoyatron. Oh. Oh. Well, this is this is the the, the pray for Stone Claw. Yeah. Yeah. If you get Stone Claw totem. represents so much damage here. Oh, oh my wow. God. <laughs> Wow! That's now that forces huge. him to Savage Roar. It does, yeah. That's that. You know, Roger has that wild growth, but he has no window to use it. He yeah. You know, he's going to have to Savage Roar to take out that that Stone Claw, or he's just taking so much damage. Wow. Yep. Savage Roar. Do you actually roar consider the opposite, keeping your creature alive? Uh, I kind of like that too. because yeah, There's no mech in play. Yeah, that's 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 reasonable, but. You do take, you know, three more face damage, and this is a matchup where you're, you know, the damage you're facing is really important. Wow. Oh, and that was a perfect draw. And the prayer worked. <laughs> it really did. Yeah, it, it did. really did. <laughs> oh, Ooh, that's not good. Sometimes you can over wild growth. Yeah, this is one of those cases for sure. You definitely want to be trying to contest the board here. Yeah, and, and this was this was a really bad uh, minion for him to get a shredder as well. It's you know a one health minion can't even. I feel like you have to hear a power that bad. Yeah, he, he yeah. is. It's gonna hit you at least another time this if you is, don't. This is a really really rough spot for Roger. Yeah, and the wild growth doesn't really do anything because you can coin a seven drop anyway. Mm -hmm. And and I mean Roger doesn't even have a taunt minion in his hand. He he, he doesn't have you know any any way to actually stop this incoming. I mean, if he, even if, if he, he did, even have if a he taunt, did, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, it would there's, not there's, be good. Yeah, this is. I don't he even know what Roger needs to have to happen here. He needs Doomsayer to come out of that Shredder. Like, yeah. Wrath, wrath. Yeah, that looks good. I, 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 good I, I really think that's, like, his best hope here. Oh, no, he's going to heal himself. Okay. Uh, that is good enough by one point, It I is, is going to keep him alive right now. Unless there's Unless a spell, spell damage to him. Damage, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't even, I don't even know that he needs that Lava Burst. I think, just, I think I like to face, face. face. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you, just, you just do so much damage and with the Lava Burst waiting in your hand. Yeah, I mean you can't, you can't you can't right heal here, your way out of this. <laughs> so the druid has to play a taunt to stay alive, and if he does, you win with first Lava shot. Burst. Yeah. And, oh, are we going for spare part taunt? That's gonna be it. Yeah, there's, there's no way out here. Ooh. Oh, that's that's one zero attack minion. Oh, and <laughs> and there we have it. Wow, and that's it for Roger. And the uh, the, Bad the start mech shaman into a great comeback <laughs> yeah. into completely crushed. Yeah, mech shaman can do that. No, oh, mech absolutely. shaman gets a good draw. It beats yeah. Druid's good draw. And I mean, we saw that game. You know, his his opening hand, the opening hand for phone tap. You know, the, the cogmaster, great start. Then yeah. the Wii off the top was really what really turned that mm -hmm. game. And the the, and the taunt shredder. Totem. Oh yeah, that the, the, the stone shredder claw, was huge the too. Stone claw was okay. There were a lot of things. There's, there's well, a lot he, of things. He, had, he, he already had the yeti in his hand. He he didn't need the yeah. shredder. Yeah, the shredder was the better play. Uh, yeah. But you know the the, yeah. the the draw of the uh, the Zapomatic and then rolling the Stone Claw just was so much damage that put yeah. uh, Roger mm -hmm. under way too much pressure. Yeah, R Roger had a what most people would consider a good Druid hand, mm -hmm. where you wild growth and then out tempo your opponent. 
But if you start from behind, wild growth and just puts you further behind well, in a lot just, of situations. You, you can't cast wild growth in turn two when you're facing nine damage. Yeah, exactly. like he was just facing so much damage exactly. that yeah. he could try and you know get ahead in future turns, but mm -hmm. he, he needed to play right now. Yeah, he yeah. needed some way to kill Whirling's Appomattox, and he didn't have it, and that was right. basically just the game right yeah, if, there. If that shredder in his hand that, that he had uh, he had innovated out had just been Keeper of the Grove, yeah. that's yeah. a completely different game. And it really highlights um, you know why that is a bad matchup. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, you, I mean, you just the, have no time to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the Druid deck is powerful in that it is capable of generating a, a big board presence right away, but it's not really great at defending itself immediately. That's one of the reasons that it you know, can struggle against Zoo, mm -hmm. yeah. struggles against, against uh, Hunter sometimes. And, I mean, we saw exactly that happen in both of those last two games where Phone Tap was able to come out really quickly and was able to put a lot of pressure, and Roger just couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how it is. Phone Tap advances. Huge win for him. Uh, Roger is certainly uh, no easy opponent. Oh, not, yeah. not at all. Nope. Uh, Roger, uh, looks like he's not going to win this one, though, but uh, Phone Tap still has a chance, and uh, we're going to get a word for him uh, with Fro down here in a second. All right, I'm joined by the other Dark Horse in the top half of the brackets, Phone Tap upsetting Roger, and it's only an upset just because we're considering the recent performances of Roger, and a lot of the players even were pegging him as the favorite to win this event from the top eight forward. So what's it like beating Roger? Did you expect that? Um, well... I knew that um, I, I liked his handlock and his um, druid, druid especially. My, my, since I took the druid away, I felt those two match, my mech shaman and my hunter were really favored in those. So I was confident in those matchups. But yeah, beating Roger is so huge, man. He's such a good player. And yeah, um, basically everybody I've been playing has just been really good. Uh, live coach, Silent Storm. So I, um, I'm Glad I've been playing uh, the best I can, and it's been working out. So, <laughs> Yesterday, uh, I, I read on your social media that after the match is finished against Silent Storm and you advanced to the top eight, you ended up getting pretty emotional there. Uh, you know, what, what's, what's the status today? Are you able to keep it going? Because it seems like you're pretty strong here, even though despite uh, a few nervous he habits here and there. Oh, yeah. I was super emotional yesterday. I was... I, had, I played everything went to um, all, all to game fives. I've been playing. I, I played three best of fives against really good players. Just the, it was a lot of mental strain on me, and the fact that I got through was just so um, huge for me. And now I got here and I'm, I advance. It's pretty uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome, man. You won $2,200 so far, and you also gotten a pretty good chunk of World Championship points. Awesome to get a good start, but you're not done yet. You're going to be facing off against Demigod, who also took out Domdis. How do you feel like your chances are against him? Well, his uh, Paladin is definitely strong against uh, most of my decks. Uh, the Handlock and the Handlock and the Control Wear, I I like those decks, so we'll s I should... If I can... Uh, uh, well, win, my, win against those decks should be okay. <laughs> All right, and then the final thing is, do you have any uh, words that you'd like to say in, in the event that you want to be able to address the people and the fans thus far and who are rooting for you? Because you seem to be one of those uh, pretty adorable, lovable dark horses to go through. Because I don't know, I mean, you didn't even, you said yourself you weren't expecting to go this far. So let's hear some words for, uh, for everybody here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. And I know coming to support the event and um, thank you for all the love on the Twitter. Um, it's incredible. I can't believe this is happening and oh and shout out to Sixo. Uh, he's, he, um, he was calling me out yesterday saying I didn't give him a shout out so here you go man. <laughs> <laughs> all right Sixo. There's your camera time buddy. And with that, we're halfway through the quarterfinals. It's been relatively quick paced but we're just getting started. Up next we have the bottom half of the bracket of Titan names. We have Kit Kats versus Trump coming up, and we're going to give it back to the desk to get ready for our third match.